Hey everyone, welcome back. iHeart Sports, Alex Hart here today. We're doing the third installment of our 2020 MLB previews. We're going to take a look at the American League Central. Five more teams. We've already done two, so if you haven't checked those out, make sure you go back or after this video you go back and check those videos out. I'll put the link for those videos down below so as you're scrolling down you give me that like, you hit that subscribe button uh, on your way to watching all the previews of the MLB. So like the videos in the past two days we are going to start from the bottom with the team's projections based on Vegas and their odds on winning how many games they're going to win. We're going to lead things off with the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers come into the season with the lowest tied with the Baltimore Orioles projected amount of wins, 21 and a half. Last year they managed to have 47 wins, so really it's kind of projected to be an improvement believe it or not. Some key signings for the Tigers in this offseason. They picked up Jonathan Scope, CJ Crone to play first base, or DH depending because they likely have Miguel Cabrera still playing first in DH. Cameron Mabin as well as Van Nova to add to the rotation. Taking a quick look here at how the Detroit Tigers had been projected based on MLB. They got Goodrum still in their lineup, expected to lead off. As you can see, CJ Crone, they do have expected to be at the first base. Miguel Cabrera in the DH, adding Johnson Scoop in second. As, and then it's kind of a couple of the same names with Christian Stewart, Austin Romine still in their lineup. When you get down to their pitchers, you can see that they are running with a couple of ex-Blue Jays, Matthew Boyd and Daniel Norris. Jordan Zimmerman still has a, a slot in this lineup, and they add Ivan Nova. So their pitching rotation, to me, doesn't look too bad, and it should be able to help them compete at the very least. They're, to me, their strongest issue is going to be with their offense and whether or not they can get something going, someone step up for them um, that wouldn't be expected. 21.5 wins, given the central somewhat of a weaker division compared to what we look at in the AL East and the NL East. Um, 21 and a half seems a little low, but Vegas seems to have, usually have a handle on these kind of things. So, thing of note that we didn't see on the starting rotation list is Michael Fulmer. Right now, he's considered to be on the disabled list with a projection to come back sometime at the beginning of the season, late July, possibly early August. Other people of note, Daniel Norris has illness as noted, so likely something to do with COVID related. The other couple names on, on this list here you see on the disabled list didn't make their projected lineup, so they're more of the roster outside of their stars and that, so I'm not reading too much into those other names. Overall, Tigers probably in for a long, short season, um, but... I, I kind of expect them to do a little bit better. They do have their eyes looking at some of the young people, hopefully trying to build a step forward going forward here, um, specifically with their, their early draft picks this last year. I'm not sure if they're going to step up this year and waste uh, some years on them, but only time will tell and how the Tigers see the season going. But I'm not too optimistic that we're going to have a lot of exciting games with the Tigers. I really am most excited to watch some of their pitching as the Blue Jays gave them some of the players, as well as they're pretty solid with the uh, five MLB-ready pitchers. Next up, we have the Kansas City Royals. Kansas City is expected to do slightly better than Detroit. Last year, 59 wins. This year, they're projected 24 and a half. Key free agents that they look to have added was Mikel Franco, third baseman, Used to be playing on the Phillies. Nothing too outstanding from him, but MLB ready player that they've added through free agency. They also re upped Alex Gordon for one year and added some relief with Jesse Hahn. Looking at what MLB projects for them, um, they do have Whit Merrifield as their leadoff old all star, so I think a lot of their offense is going to be relying on him. 
going down Jorge Solar in the DH spot, Salvador Perez and Alex Gordon, Mikel Franco is kind of their seems to be the core of their lineup. I'm going to be honest, a couple of these names are new to me, specifically Mondesi, Ryan O'Hearn, I believe he was around, but I don't really recognize what he's like, Nicky Lopez. Moving down to their pitchers, Brad Keller, Duffy, Eunice, all from prior year. They they did all right. Danny Duffy had some injuries he was dealing with in the past couple of years, but when he was on, he was on, so that, that'll be interesting to see how he can deal with this short season. Ian Kennedy looks, according to this, to move to the closer role. Um, kind of surprising to see that as I'm prepping up for the season here, but I guess if that's what they're going to be doing, he's not really capable of giving them the innings that he did in the past when he was a starter, so might be the best role for him given this team. So after going through the lineup here, we're looking at the injury list and already a couple of names that were in their projected lineup are out. Specifically, Ryan O'Hearn, who I said I wasn't quite sure who this man was. Uh, he seems to be out questionable for the start of the season. He has the illness question mark. Brad Keller, same scenario. However, the other couple players, like to try it, are just kind of borderline possibly filler spots, so I don't think they're going to be too missed going into the season. For me, the Royals number seems pretty accurate. I actually wouldn't be too surprised if the Tigers compete heavily with the Royals. I would lean towards being more confident in the Tigers pitching. Some of the players in the Tigers lineup seem to be more seasoned, potentially have better of a history, so for me, wouldn't surprise me to see Kansas City and the Tigers very neck and neck on the season and make for some interesting games when they play each other. Looking at the numbers, I would say I thought the Tigers were a little bit low. Maybe I'm thinking Kansas City's a little bit high. Somewhere in between is where I, I, I see both these teams ending for the season. Third team up here, we have the Chicago White Sox. For me, this was one of the, the exciting teams in this division that I was really looking forward to watching this year. However, some things we're about to go through uh, aren't quite adding up for the White Sox. They had 72 wins last year, projected to have 31 and a half this year, so they're expected to go from under 500 to above 500. Pretty big step for this team, and it all kind of goes back to a couple of things, including the free agents they signed. Number one, they signed Ismani Grandal, big catcher, five years, so that's a pretty big contract to sign up for a catcher. Ex Dodger, he was a pretty big role and had some pretty big power there, so I think he would really fit into this lineup and this team who has not had a really solid catcher for a number of years now. They also added a couple of starting pitchers in Gio Gonzalez and more importantly Dallas Keuchel for three years. That just goes to their young pitchers. Now they're bringing in some veterans and they're really bolstering their, their team in all aspects starting pitching up into the lineup. They also added a pretty strong reliever in Steven Chizik. He had quite a good time when he was with the Seattle Mariners. I remember watching him a couple times when I went down there. He was solid for them, and he's had a pretty good number of years now. Edwin Diaz kind of set him out of there, but I think he can really fit into the Chicago White Sox team, who look to be really setting up to make some moves in this central division. Now let's take a look at the projected lineup for the White Sox. Tim Anderson, Moncada, Abreu, Jimenez, Grandal, and Cachillon. Pretty solid top six. We're going to get to it in the injuries, but Moncada still hasn't reported to summer camp yet, so he hasn't really started. He's maybe expected to be a little bit late in the season. The pitching rotation, Giolato seems to have the number one spot, Keiko. Ronaldo Lopez, Gio Gonzalez, all very solid MLB pitchers. The only one I don't super recognize is Dylan Cease, but it looks like they're bringing him in as Michael Kopech has decided to take the season off. It's a little uncertain as to why. It seems to be personal re reasons. It might be COVID-related, but it's also come out recently that he battles with depression and anxiety, so the pitching coach 
was on the record saying that he's a little concerned for Michael. Let's hope everything works out and he eventually comes back because this White Sox team, if they can get Kopech in there, really, really good rotation and could really set them up for some years to come. So other than what I just mentioned about Michael Kopech and Moncada, who seems to have the illness as part of his DL list, the really only other person that's on this list is Carlos Rondon, again, uh, someone that's been a starter for them for a number of years. At least been pretty, pretty solid, giving them the innings and giving them some wins here and there. So I think if he can come back, they're, they're, they got one of the stronger rotations in this division as well. And with Kopech, hopefully they can work something out and he'll be back next year for them. And because this team looks very promising down the stretch and into the future. Given that this team is still kind of coming together, a couple new players added this year, the 31 and a half to me seems pretty pretty fair. They do have somewhat easier schedule considering they're going to have 10 games against the Royals, 10 games against the Tigers, and they're going to match up with that NL Central, which we're going to be doing soon. So I would think that they're pretty expected to make this number. Um, it comes down to pitching for a lot of these teams. If the pitching in the 60-game schedule can be strong, then the teams have a really good shot to compete. Anyone can win these divisions, definitely with 60 games, and I wouldn't count the White Sox out of winning this division, or at least picking up a wild card spot. Next up, projected 32 wins are the Cleveland Indians. Last year, they had a 93-win campaign. They didn't add too much in the free agent market this season, only really adding two MLB ready players. Cesar Hernandez, they're, they're bringing in to play at the second base, and they also brought in Domingo Santana. One important note for the Indians here is that they traded off Kluber, so their rotation is going to be lacking him this season. But let's, let's take a quick look at what everything's going to look like for the Indians. Taking a look here at the Indians projected lineup from MLB. Still has a couple of the same core that they had from their successful years in the past. Lindor, Carlos Santana, Jose Ramirez. They look to have added Domingo Santana and Cesar Hernandez, who are kind of slotting into the bottom of their lineup. I'm very interested to see how Tyler Naquin fits into this team and whether he can really take some steps forward as he was at one point expected to be one of their top, top prospects. So looking now at their pitchers, now that Kluber's gone, they're relying on Shane Bieber and Mike Clevenger to really step up their game and help cover the cost of that. Carlos Caraseco is still in here, and he's always been a pretty solid part of their lineup. Adam Plutko and Plesak are both kind of new names to me and I know they're they're working their way into the MLB so be looking to see how the Indians can really match up against the other teams still have closer Brad Hand who is going to be lights out when it gets to that point in the ball game so at least they got that going for them in the relief the Indians don't really at this point have anyone other than the Shields on their injury list so what we're looking at there is basically the lineup they're going to be rolling out after just really going through it for the first time there now, I'm concerned that they're going to be able to maintain what they had in the past. Chicago White Sox are fresh on their heels, especially from Vegas, projecting them half a game behind. So if you had to ask me right now, I would say Cleveland is on the downward trend and Chicago is on the upward trend. But it's why they play the games. We're going to see what this new Cleveland look team has whether their pitchers can carry through with what the pitching has done for them in the past to help get them through the games. Last up, we have the Minnesota Twins coming off a monster year where they had a 101 win campaign this year. They're expected 34 and a half wins, and that's no surprise that they're really projected to be the top of this division. Minnesota is not taking their foot off the gas. They added a couple of key players in the free agent market. They added Josh Donaldson for four years, Michael Pineda, Rich Hill, Sergio Romo, Homer Bailey, Tyler Clippard, all MLB ready players. Quite a bit of pitching, which I think was a little bit of their struggle last year, at least when it came to the playoffs. 
But now that they've added two strong relievers and a couple of fresh starters, taking a look at their projected lineup here from MLB, quite strong pretty much through the whole order. The only player I am not super familiar with is Louis Arrays. Other than that, the rest of them have been around the MLB for quite some time. You'll notice, too, when we get to the pitchers, Kenta Maeda is also there. The LA Dodgers sent him over in a trade, so that's another additional pitcher to their lineup. Also of note, you'll see Michael Pineda, who they signed in the free agency for a two-year contract, isn't listed as a projected pitcher, and that has to do with him being suspended for performance-enhancing drugs. So out of that projected lineup, there are a couple of key pieces missing, most notably Miguel Sano, who is out with coronavirus. With this virus, we're still not sure the timeline with certain players and how long it's going to be. Some seem to be having serious symptoms, some seem to be having no symptoms. It's only a matter of time before we really know how long players are going to be out for it if they're not there at the beginning of the season. Notably, Pineda is out suspended like I said he'll be back sometime in September he got a 60 game suspension however he's already served some so he'll be back before the end of the season Byron Buxton is another one on here that is on the list he's at the bottom of their lineup but he's a fast player so he's good for the wraparound strategy um, just questionable for the start of the season so it's a good chance that we'll still see him once the season gets going do we think the Minnesota Twins will repeat? I certainly do. With a lineup this strong in this division, I think the Twins are more than capable of winning this division again. And if I had to put my money on it, that's where I would be laying my money down. And that wraps up the American League Central. If you guys made it this far in the video, I really hope that I gave you some sort of knowledge on some of these teams. For me, it's a little bit of research going through the motions. I don't know a lot about every team. Following all 30 teams takes a lot of work. So I'm just kind of getting my information from the sources I can, just trying to get it out there to you guys as well. And yeah, just trying to get ready for the season. I'm going to be ripping out videos as fast as I can, as much information as I can, giving my opinion on the stuff that breaks down on the MLB season. So if you guys catch anything that I might have missed in this video please please leave a comment below and let everyone know what what you know that we might not because that's what this channel is going to be about it's about sharing it's about a community we're all coming together for one one passion and it's baseball so thanks again for watching if you made it this far please leave a like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys again soon bye